Hi, I'm Deborah Vinsel, and you're watching Mission Nonprofit. Each month, we connect with local organizations and agencies that are making a positive impact in our communities. We've invited Eli Sterling from Earthbound Productions to talk about their work. Thanks for joining us, Eli. You are not hey, a stranger to me. We've known each other for a long time. We have known each other for a long time. Oh my gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it, it all started with you, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Well, let's, let's talk about the, the genesis of Earthbound. Um, there was a program on our channels way back in the day called Earthbound, and you were the producer yeah. of that. So tell us how that all evolved to what Earthbound Productions is. Yeah, it, it well, it, it began, so I showed up there out of Seattle, at, over to Evergreen, get my master's degree at the, uh, you know, the Evergreen State College. And I founded an event there called uh, the Rachel Carson Environmental Forum. And it, it was based on the idea that we have sort of separated our policy from our culture. We need to get more culture involved in how we discuss how we want to, how we want to shape our future. And in that event, um, I made this, uh, it was about rainforest and I made the, uh, the central focus of the of the conference, um, a, a Peruvian flute band, and the intermission was actually the um, was actually the lecture. The idea being is we need to take who, you know our we need to have our culture expand beyond the way we negotiate, and so that idea was just something I carried out of out of my graduation, and then suddenly into uh, TCTV to you know to produce a television show, a live call and talk show, but. Um, which was very successful, as we know. It went on for five years, won a number of awards. But inside that uh, show was a we produced a music video each time, and that was that would always introduce the uh, live call-in portion of that hour-long show with the idea that you know when you create culture, this music video, you naturally have community participation. So this idea of generating a cultural dynamic around. The, in our environmental concerns and our environmental appreciation um, is, a, is a way of engendering more participation was just how that TV show was developed. And then, um, and then you know, media, as you know, it is, a, it is a slippery beast. And so it became pretty clear to me after five years of that that we weren't going to win, uh, we weren't going to win the media war. This is the time of, uh, of a different type of onslaught on media people were discovering in 1995 the internet it was just like well we're not we're not we got this by the tail and it is a grease tail <laughs> so this idea of doing the procession in a cultural way which did not carry any language with it any words in it you know, um with a new concept um, because there was lots of demonstrations but it was one that leveled the playing field and that was the, the you know the essential aspect that came from five years of just doing television shows here on tctv meeting different people um, just sort of learning how to facilitate a lot of different dynamics. I mean, I think people, we see a television, we have, we hold these phones, right? Which is so funny, um, you know, which has a huge amount of technology and, and we're taking selfies. I mean, we don't know how to go much beyond that. And yet uh, you, you would act, you know, when we, I was on the board at, at a time when we were trying to decide whether to go digital or not, it, it is, it is, it's complex. Right. Really complex. So and, how so um, so you evolved out of the TV show, um, and we'll get we'll get to other things that we're that Earthbound Productions is best known for. But you created a nonprofit organization called Earthbound Productions, and as a result of that, to to move this concept of culture, uh, engaging the community in a cultural event in order to connect with the environment. So what is what is the mission of Earthbound Productions? What's your 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 you know mission statement? Yeah. So the mission, which is different than say the vision, as we know, as they say. Um, so the mission is really to enhance greater appreciation um, and understanding, and then and then, and then at the end, protection of the natural world. The the vision is actually to elevate the dignity of the human spirit by enhancing the cultural exchange between communities in the natural world. That's the big vision. The on the grounds thing is this word called, and the, the vision has integrity of spirit. The on the ground is enhanced. I mean, we're, we're doing a cultural activity. We are not on the, on the impacting the natural uh, physical environment, which needs to happen. We're not saving parks, we're not pulling. But we are doing what is, what is that, putting that aesthetic forward 
that that makes the difference, you know, in, in someone's home, you know, when you just have that 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 well, you know, whether you have art or your music, but the way you arrange things in your life, then you know this is important. So the procession, by not having any words, what I was talking about, whereas before everything's really complex, we simplified it down so that it's available to everybody. And so the culture should always be available to everybody. And it's not. So that was that's sort of the, the vision there of how you enhance something. We're not trying to say we're the Department of the College, you are the Sierra Club, uh, but we are saying that we have the capacity in that culture to, to bring forward our greater selves, our better so, selves. So you just kind of slid in where we're headed, which is the procession, and most people who live in greater Thurston County, if you've been here for any period of time, when people say the procession, it's a very it has a very specific meaning. It's the procession of the species that has been an annual event for a long, long time until last year. So tell us how that concept of the procession came about. And we know that that's the primary focus that Earthbound had, but we'll talk about other things a, later, a little bit later on. But talk to me a little bit about how this idea came about and, you know, obviously uh, grew over 25 years. Yeah, there, um, yeah, that, well, it's fun because um, as time has gone on and over 25 years, I'll be alongside some conversation. Someone doesn't know who I am and they're talking about either they started it or how it started. There's a lot of <laughs> mythology on, on how this all started. But I do have to give a shout out. There is a, a person, a woman named Gita Moulton, right. who was the uh, a good friend of mine and who really we did, we produced, uh, well, there's a winter solstice celebrations, really, and summer solstice celebrations, which had more of that cultural stuff as sort of as a start. And they used to be taking place at the state capitol. And so, but in that context, there was um, a very spiritual basis on, um, on how to approach this idea of culture. So it wasn't coming from an entertainment value, it was coming from, a, from an aspect of spirituality. And so the, and the idea, not, not in the religious sense, but in the, in the sense that we are on a planet we are floating around infinity, something weird is going on. And we do have the opportunity in our region right here to be really kind. Other people don't have those opportunities. We have the, the luxury, the privilege, the opportunity. And so that's all of that sort of genesis of get, in 1995 is, is sort of coming together. The other aspect is um, that was the era of Newt Gingrich and he had a contract on America and he was using a sort of a different type of culture, very religious, mm -hmm. moralistic mm -hmm. culture, quite hypocritical actually. Um, in its spaces, but it was using to attack the Endangered Species Act. And that gets to the spirit part, because we, that Endangered Species Act, would not be passed today. It was at a time, just a very brief moment in, in history, where people recognize we are losing something valuable here. We don't have an answer. Let's just stop. And, and, the, and the act is really very simple. And then that became an attack on that act. And for me, that was quite personal. And I decided, you know, that the procession was an opportunity then um, to advance that uh, a pushback. Also, in 1995, people were apologizing to be environmentalists. You know, you're a tree hugger, you're this and that. And you know, the timber wars were just sort of coming off, coming to a close. And, and so environmentalists were back on their heels and there was no movement forward to say, no, 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 wait a minute. There's no need to apologize for the beauty of the natural world. You know, and an appreciation for that. It doesn't matter if you're, what aspect you're in. So, um, so we were rare in the country, and we got a lot of national press the pushing forward, pushing forward. But again, by not having any written words, we only have three rules. There are no written words, no live animals, and no motorized vehicles. We sort of took the dynamic of what was governing culture at the start and pulled that out. Again, just to level the playing field. And then from that aspect, it was, um, there was a, a poem a, in our first meeting, the idea came up of the Fremont Parade in Seattle, where they actually created an art studio. And I personally am really, really proud of the fact when we decide lineage. So the, there was a solstice parade in Santa Barbara. Some of those people came up to Fremont. They started the Fremont Parade where, in the neighborhood where I live. And then we're coming down here. And so, oh, yeah, that's right. And so we're sort of a sister, younger sister relationship to Fremont, to Santa Barbara, on how these how these events get created. Differently, however, is that we really um, had something really specific. We weren't just out there to do a Chautauqua or 
dancing in the street, there was something at stake. And that was the Endangered Species Act. That was endangered species in, in, in general. And this idea that you could not just be uh, uh, someone amazed by this beauty of the world. And in the 90s, that was our first big splash. Uh, economically, stock market was going up and people were just forgetting. So that's how that all started up. And, and really, there's a lot of really, really neat people that sort of had grounded ideas on what to do. It, was, it wasn't exactly like herding cats, but by having a very specific meet, you know, meeting and a mission, as, and then there was, there was a distinction, and you've heard some of this stuff before, and it's all complex, but there was a distinction between creating a cultural exchange and an entertainment event. And so I was able to break that out philosophically, and dynamically, I could put it on a chalkboard, and we knew how to steer ourselves away from just doing something that was pure entertainment, because pure entertainment means, the purest form of entertainment means zero responsibility. And we were trying to create something culturally, which means you have a responsibility to it. Right. So that yeah. was how it all began. And the beauty of it was having a deep philosophy and having a community that was that was hungry for that and confused. But the environmental movement at that time in 1995 was not on, a, on the cutting edge of stuff in its mind, in its philosophy. So there are people looking for that. And, and then there are great schemers at Olympia. It's the fun part, part about being in, in Olympia, as you know, and Tumwater and Lacey, I think of all Thurston County mm -hmm. um, uh, and also Mason County. And I just think in Lewis, I mean, it's just that there are some good schemers here, whether they're out on the farm or not. And, and so you have to have, you know, someone said, well, what, what makes a successful nonprofit? You have to have good schemers, as we had with TCT, as you do. So if you don't have good schemers and you don't have a desire to scheme, Good plans. Uh, then then you step behind. <laughs> Let's say plans. So, hey, so I want to take a moment right now um, because you've talked about what the procession looked like in 1995. And I, I imagine there might be a few folks who are watching this who maybe have never experienced the procession. But I know that we have years and years and years of, of procession video. And I would like to show a little bit of that right now. And we'll come back uh, to talk a little bit about what the future of Earthbound Productions looks like. So here's a little bit of the procession of the species. a beautiful look at the procession of the species and uh, what it looked like going past our cameras. Um, I, can, I can say that some of my favorite memories of the procession over the years are the, the big huge puppets and um, you know it started very early on with the big sun and there was the whale and the oarfish and you know a bunch of different things and um, I know that as the organizer of the procession you didn't just do the procession as a you know once a year thing there were you would see these puppets or the batik banners or whatever throughout the year so talk a little bit about how you took um, the assets of the procession and continued to roll them out to the community through the year some of the things that you've done and then we'll talk a little bit about the future well yeah Thanks for asking that question, because I think sometimes people think, wow, you know, you can just, as it gets to now, you can just put up a date and a time and people can just sort of show up and maybe they'll show up or whatever. But uh, it took 10 years of 
full-time work uh, just uh, and, and devotion of just saying, you know, putting on events throughout the year to try to keep this momentum going. And part of the part of the procession and the cultural sense re is realizing our culture really resides in our conversation, and a lot of that conversation around the dinner table. And so we had to try to create events year round uh, just to sort of keep people in mind of what the procession stood for and what it was about. So we used to do auctions like, okay, we're going to do a garage sale, or bring your stuff for a garage sale. It didn't make any money. It was a lot of work. Um, but we knew that, you know, we tell people, oh, it's going to happen three or four months from now. We, that stuff in the closet, leave it there. So the hope was that they open the closet, that something would fall down and they'd, you know, curse a little bit because they had to save it for the procession. But it would try to keep that word in mind. Um, and so there were a lot of them. So we would we would do a solstice celebration, a winter solstice celebration, you know, like a summer solstice. Uh, periodic, uh, when we started doing luminaries, started doing you know, sort of punctuated events with the luminary. But mostly also is that we, we as every every organization needs, you need some sort of good heart held symbol. And for us, it was those petite wind socks. And so what we were able to do with the wind socks, um, because it stood for something. We, and it's important, as you know, in me media, you constantly have to both renew and refresh, but you have to be, you have to be spot on with your messaging. So it's People, oh yeah, that's that's about nature, and it's about kindness. And so when other events started showing up, you know, they you just need that little extra punctuation, and we were there available. We didn't sort of force ourselves onto spaces, but there were a number of events and programs throughout where there was the gate, where you know bigger things like gay pride or people who were just trying to do a, a bake sale, something that was you know so we what we are out for, the kindness, the common good, you know, it can be exemplified by the procession. So we ended up pretty rapidly becoming something that um, a lot of people uh, wanted to include mm -hmm. in that space. So mm -hmm. the, but for us, it was also, we needed to, to make sure that the message had stayed year round. So one of the things we did, I mean, we do things out in parks, you know, we would do nature walks at night. One, one big event we did was called Midnight Moonlight. We reserved McLean Creek Nature Trail took up two big busloads of, uh, of youth on the street. We worked with community youth services, not just picking people up. We were always, we're designing. There's another organization in our community working really hard. What do they, what could they use from us to enhance their capacity? We weren't trying to create new stuff. We didn't start our, people said, well, you got to work with youth at risk. I said, well, there are plenty of organizations working with youth at risk. Let's work with the organization. So in many ways, we're kind of a little bit of a, you know, people, we weren't as renegade as, as, as people thought we were. Uh, we really, really worked on saying, okay, where are the organizations on the ground that are successful? So we were, we worked with the state departments of ecology, fish and wildlife. U.S. Fish and Wildlife was a major sponsor of the procession for a long time. Um, because those are the people on the ground doing the work, and that, that's where we aimed. So it was for 10 years, it was full time. And then, then, and then, you know, you just sort of have to let things have to, you just have to let it simmer and see right. where it goes. And so we sort of pulled out of, of doing a lot of stuff for the rest of the community um, and just sort of letting the procession reside. That became our flagship piece. And um, that's what people began to really recognize and know. We did do a lot of earthbound events, but to be honest, people, in my mind, if it said earthbound on it, we were going to have a great show. Um, but people weren't showing up. I mean, we moved more towards, instead of doing winter solstice celebrations, towards an illuminated ball. Because of funding, we actually had to raise money, but we had to want to, we wanted a more concentrated way of reaching people. Um, so you know, you have to go at the times. Yeah. People's, you know, yeah. technology, so, computers, people's way of social interaction. Yeah. So you're a nonprofit, and and most people know yeah. you as being kind of the, you know, the the father of the procession, and along with Gita Moulton's, you know, support. Um, yeah. But nonprofits have boards of directors. You have a board structure. How, structurally, yep. how does Earthbound function? So we end up getting, you know, we became a, a community nonprofit. And sort of and when we were doing the television show in 1995, starting the procession, we became a state nonprofit. And then we got our 501c3 in the year 2000. Um, and so there would be, and there, there's a whole other genre of, of level of work, as you're quite well aware. <laughs> And we got our, you know, did all our audits and everything like that. And we've always had an outside accountant doing our work. So we really set up from the very beginning to be pretty pristine about it. That's just mm -hmm. something I felt really important. Right. Um, learning, actually being on the board at TCTV. 
And um, so from the very beginning, I was a huge okay. solid founding roots. And our board has expanded from 15 people to six people and such like that, seeing what sort of really facilitated it. Okay. We came up, because we had such a sort of a real specific philosophy, we found out that better for us personally, we did we weren't going to be having a board that went and raised money. We weren't in that typical format of, of a board that raised money. We had a we had a working board. And the reason for that is that we had a community art studio uh, that was part of our program to, to find a vacant warehouse, a vacant school, turn it into a, a community art studio for free. And so people, well, that automatically you bring in a banker. It's like, what are you doing that for free? There was a lot of, to be honest, there was just a right. lot of fiscal right. and, uh, headbutting over what we needed to provide and how you're going to get right. money and who was going to be in charge. So we we had to make a decision. Um, another another concept that came up right off the bat was um, warehouses. Uh, got in on board. We're here to give money. Da 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 da. And so we had to have okay. Well, how are we gonna how are we gonna deal with that? And we had a group of people saying, well, you just take the money. It doesn't matter. And again, so for for from my perspective, and, and we had good discussions about it, is that we really why okay? We if it was just a natural cost, take it. You know, take money where you can get it. Yeah. But if it <laughs> if something red flag raises raises up, then you've got to figure out what that is. And my world is well, okay. We'll take money from warehouses as long as all their fines are paid off at the Department of Ecology, because that's who we're really supporting is the Department of Ecology. We love warehouses, it's great. You pay off your fines, because we're actually not gonna go against the Department of Ecology. And we talk to yeah. warehouses and they say, okay, all right, well, we'll uh, let you know when we're ready to uh, pay you some, give you some money. So, you know, we set up on a different route. And so we do not have a fundraising board. We have a working board. We have a philosophical board. We have a board that, that looks out for the ideas of where, where where do you really bring in a common good? And where do you bring in this idea that nature should be available mm -hmm. to everyone? How do you make it available and the creative spirit? So you're an all, so that's how yeah, you're an all non I mean, you're an all volunteer organization. Yeah, yeah. we are an all volunteer yeah. organization. Yeah. So hence, hence the no working board. Salary. Yeah. yeah, there's no, there's no salary. We haven't had that money for some. So yeah, and it, it is, you know, it's, it is, it, it was, it's a risk. You know, it's a, it's sort of a passion. But we, you know, so we don't, as you well know, we don't advertise any, you know, we do it word of mouth. We don't go up to Seattle. This is a, you know, you have to do things that take care of your own region. You know, everyone gets something big and then they go, oh yeah, we have people all the way from California. It's never been our design. Okay. You know, our design is, this is our community. You have to do something that enhances the, 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 the distinction of who and identity of who we are. And we'll just stick with that. But you can't, that means that suddenly getting hotel motel tax money is demanding that you, advertise on Seattle, bring people down that you don't know, mm -hmm. uh, and then have to deal with their behavior. So no, we're, we're here for right. ourselves. So keeping so it, it local, work. keeping it tight, yeah, keeping so it we, volunteer. Yeah. So we still have, we still do our 990 taxes. We still, you know, we still raise money and of course, and we get donations from people. And I just want to say on the bottom of your, uh, your plate, you're, you're funded by Olympia federal savings. So unabashed, you know, push or push button or whatever you want to call it. Shout out. Olympia Federal Savings and the Community Foundation um, have been our two big supporters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great community yeah. supporters. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, we're you know our time. You and I could talk for a long, long time. Yeah, I know. Oh, we do that. Yeah, I mean, um, but we're, our time is getting short, and I do want to kind of loop back around to the impacts that COVID nineteen has had. Um, obviously, last year, so many local events were impacted, and cancel well postponed we'll use that word yeah. um as was the procession and there's no plan to to stage a procession in 2021 so what's earthbound productions doing now and what does the future look like yeah well thank thank you for asking that so that last march um i wrote a letter way before anyone else did in the top of march i, I put out the the news press release and everything that we would not be producing our illuminated ball and our procession in 2020. And that there were, while the procession is great, uh, it's wonderful, there are other things that we needed to, to uh, start focusing on immediately, things for the immediate aspects and then on, and on down the line. And the, the word I used at that time was that Earthbound Production would not be producing the procession, but we're not postponing, we're repositioning. And I think this is the word that I, I would still can I still consider using for us. The, recently on our uh, on 
one of our, our Facebook page, someone said, wrote in and said, well, just because um, things are different doesn't mean they have to end. And it also means that just because things are different doesn't mean they have to be the same. And so what's happened is that we, we, there are things more important in the procession right now. And at that time, I really did talk in March. This is before the whole thing with Floyd. I uh, talked about, we, look, at we, when things go sideways, things continue to go sideways, just like that boat in the Suez Canal. So you, you know, uh, I'm sorry. And so we need to start looking out for ageism. We need to start looking out for racial relationships. Uh, we need to practice what we're doing right now um, as a way of being able to take on global warming, the, the very behavior we have right now. What is that going to do and say when the global warming issues come up? But there are a lot of things we need to be focused on, and the procession isn't one of those things that we need to be focused on. We've we put in our 25 years. We, we should know a little bit how to behave. We now need to take what we've done as a community, what we're capable of doing, and how to, and how to sort of shovel through stuff. And I said it, it would take, it could be the short term or the long term, but eventually our community will come back together with some kind of a compassionate aspect. Again, this was in March of 2020, and I'm talking about people not being compassionate. I'm talking about people being agitated and angry for a long time. That's going to take time to dissipate. So to be honest, Earth Balance, okay, guys, you know, let's just step back. So we have not been out trying to proliferate um, this idea that um, of community gatherings. Also, we have, a, we have a governor and people who are doing their best. Diana Yu from Thurston County, County big Samba dancer, mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out all the different types of things of medical assistance and stuff. And right. we're, you know, and we're going like, those people need support. What do they want us to do? If they don't want us to gather, we're not we're gathering. Not gather. And so the procession, again, I think it's essential for this year to recognize that we're based on an inclusive invitation. It's to a very exclusive event, you know, this, this, but it's inclusive. Until everyone has a vaccine, mm -hmm. you cannot make an inclusive event. You cannot make an inclusive invitation. And the procession and Earthbound is only about all the aspects that we don't recruit different aspects of the community, mm -hmm. but we do allow an inclusive invitation to flourish. Right. You can't do that until everyone has a vaccine. So we actually have just been, okay, we've been forefront for 25 years. We can actually stay back and see, you know, let the volunteer base dissipate, let everyone figure out how they have to deal with their own life. And then we'll see what volunteer base comes up and what people want to do. And remember, it's that scheming thing, it's that repositioning. And, you know, I'm perfectly, you know, we'll see what happens. But again, as you know, uh, the procession was only designed to last for 20 years, 20, 20, 25, one generation. We did that. And the reason being is that we wanted to create an opportunity for people to visualize, oh, there was a story that started 25 years ago deliberately. I mean, we put it into, we've got videos talking about how we're going to do this for 20 years. We've done that story. So how do we then take that 20 year story in our mind and put it to forward vision about what the next story should be? Because there should be another story. We should be looking at how do we want to re-engage who we are as people right now. Instead, here we are in a pandemic and property prices are going through the roof, which means people at lower incomes cannot get into a house. Right. So those are there are things that need to happen. Where Earthbound is going to be in that, I don't know. It will depend on the volunteer base. Again, we don't have one right now. We, we have our core people. Yeah. Well, but we've dissipated. Them. Let's just touch on that before we close. How... Do you need volunteers now? Do you want volunteers? And how do people get more information about how they can engage with Earthbound? Right now, we start, so we have a website, procession.org, which you can get, it's basically a historical archive. I have a, I mean, I get my latest letter up there on the, on the Facebook that says, uh, you know, be cool. Um, and then uh, we have a Facebook page, a Procession of the Species Olympia, I guess. Yeah, Procession of Species Olympia Facebook page. And there's and there's that sort of little bit of chatter that's going on right now. But to be honest, um, when you're looking at repositioning yourself, you have to see what the lay of the land is. So you, you're, you know, we're not moving forward to reposition without knowing what some of the, mm -hmm. the deliberate mm -hmm. aspects are. And I think in that, in that point of view, I think I said where we look at ourselves right now is that any successful, in my mind, any successful business, nonprofit, is that you eventually become a, a, a sort of a, an orientation point in your community that people can then move from that on. Like, oh, that's where the old coffee shop used to be. You know, have, you know, oh yeah, 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 I'll meet you there two blocks down. In other words, when you are, when you're successful, you really have to look at your place in the community as a, 
the point of orientation is that when someone mentions that name, mm -hmm. they know from there where they want to go next. Right. And that's, yeah. that's what we need to sort of protect. Okay. Well, we are sadly out of time uh, for this episode of Mission Nonprofit. Thank you so much for joining me, Eli. I know. Thank you for the invitation. You are totally more than welcome. Cool. And I know that our community will be watching and waiting to see what the next chapter is in the Earthbound production story. So we wish you the best of luck with that. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and congratulations on your great tenure too, oh, Deb. You did thank amazing. You. Yeah, seriously. Thank you. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're outlasting so, me, so that's okay. great. Okay. All right, take so, care, bye-bye. Well, thanks for joining us, Eli. Um, and that's all we have uh, for this episode of Mission Nonprofit. You can visit the Processions website at procession.org. Mission Nonprofit is available on Channel 77 here on the Comcast system on Sundays at 4.30, Tuesdays at 6 p.m., Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., Fridays at noon, and Saturdays at 2.30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. And you can also watch us online at tcmedia.org. From all of us here at Thurston Community Media, thanks for watching Mission Nonprofit. We'll see you next month.